Welcome back everybody. Today we are making sausages. I love making sausage. It's uh, I've been doing it a long time. Uh, I had some beef. I was cutting up some beef the other day and I had a whole bunch of very lean trim and I said you know what let's make some uh, beef sausage out of it. But these are beef but I'm using pork fat. Pork fat that's a whole other video, but pork fat just is a better fat for making sausages. I'll have to go into that in a different video, just whatever. But today we're making sausage, so I could use the stuffer. I've got the casings uh, soaking already, but what I did, I actually pre-ground, weighed out all the salt, mixed, did all that prep yesterday, because what I, by doing that, you let everything uh, marry together. You let that flavor develop. You can grind it, mix it, stuff it, and then let it sit for a day or two. And uh, so today, nice and simple, we're gonna get the stuffer put together and then get these bad boys uh, stuffed out and then cooking on the smoker. So here we go. you there we go beautiful really quickly what I did I coarse ground the meat you always want to try and have the meat bigger than the fat just looks better in the sausage the fat was ground through the smaller plate uh, I weighed it out what I do I kind of call it my food diary uh, basically with this I've got two kilos of beef 900 grams of fat and 500 grams of water. So this is like 3.4 kilos. Then I put all the uh, spices in. This one here, I didn't go crazy. Black pepper, white pepper, garlic, some chipotle for a little bit of heat and a little bit of paprika. Fairly simple, nice flavors that I like. Uh, so this, Nice and firm, because I use pickling salt. It's got a nice bind. It's very tight, actually. When you do this right and mix it long enough, that water, first, the salt helps break down the protein, which opens it up so that it can bind all the fat and water together. So by when you're mixing, it becomes one mass I used like I said 500 grams of water you can't tell there's nothing leaking there's nothing leaked out so I know I did it right so these are gonna turn out awesome with my food diary here this way I have recipes but this one I just basically came up with out of my head so what I do is I keep track of it that way I know if it worked well if it worked well I'll keep it I can fine tune the spicing after, that's just much easier. But yeah, if you're gonna do this, keep like a food diary. It's a good, a good way to keep track of what you've done. And if a recipe works, keep it. Get this bad boy up. Whoop. There we go. Okay, so let's just get this bad boy together. So basically we have the piston here which is going to go inside the cylinder which pushes everything out. I've just got to attach this. You got your stuffing horn and your nut which attaches it on. Always a good idea. Yes it was put away clean but just rinse it out. And I'm just using a towel here so I don't uh, scratch the counter. So basically once we fill this, this will go on here. And then with the handle here, all you're doing is uh, lowering this piston into the hopper here and then pushing the, the meat out. When you're loading it, you wanna try and minimize the air. So you will need to uh, push it down slowly 
bring the handle down. You will hear, it lets off a little bit of the air which is on the top side. Nice and slow. Meat's coming there. There we go. Get this bad boy on there. Get rid of you. And now, as you can see, the meat is filling the horn. And we're just gonna bring it to the tip. Back off the pressure a little bit. We're just gonna try and keep everything as clean as we can. Okay, got all that set up. Now with the casings, you always want to uh, let them soak. I had the end before, but it fell in. Lovely. Now what we're using here is uh, hog casings. Uh, I think it was like 2832, which is the, the diameter range. Because they are natural casings, you will get a variation in size. And if I can find an end. Okay, after, after all that, what you wanna do, find the end, open it up, put some water in it. Because trust me, if you've done this before, it helps uh, putting the casing on the horn much, much easier. There's no easy way to do this, people. You just have to uh, take your time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just cut this one. Put that in there, keep that handy. Tie knot. There. What we will do is try to keep the area clean as much as we can. What you want to do, you want to stuff them fairly tight, but what you want to do is keep one hand on the nozzle to create some back pressure. people will stuff one, twist it, do I like to stuff it all out and then twist the whole thing at the same time. That's the way I used to do it. And by keeping your hand on here, you will keep out a lot of the air as well. There we go. Pistons all the way down to the end. What we're gonna do, strip some off, cut that. And uh, we're gonna get to twisting the casings and making sausage. And nothing fancy here, people. We're just, uh, Gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna make them fairly tight. Basically the first one. I know I'm out of practice. So what we're gonna do is pinch one here and here. So essentially we're making two at the same time because we're doing that one and that one. Again, pinch there and there. Twist, make it nice and firm and so on. And the last one. And tie a knot on the end. And 
And there you have it. Some homemade sausages. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut them individual and then lay them on the racks. That way I don't have to do it outside. I won't be filming too much outside today because the weather isn't cooperating and it's raining a lot. So unfortunately I'm not bringing my camera out to show you all that. If, if it pauses, I will. And what I will be doing in my smoker, I will because the the you've seen they're they're vertically stacked. Every probably half an hour, I will be flipping their position just just to get the better airflow, and uh, I just find it works better. Okay, we're done. Now I'm gonna go out and probably get wet and put them in the smoker. Okay, we're done. Woohoo! So I just took them off the smoker. There we go. Beautiful. What I'm gonna do, oh, that's a big one, whatever. Oh yeah, nice and juicy. Mm. Oh, that's nice. You can see how juicy they are. Beautiful. Great consistency. Can't ask for anything better than that. That's awesome. Beautiful, awesome. But what I need to do, which is very important because you want to stop the cooking, got some ice. Pour some ice over top. This is an important step. You want to stop them basically in their tracks where where you've got them to. Shocking them with ice, like an ice bath like that, is the best way to do it. We're just gonna let those sit there for now. This one in my food diary is a keeper. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with how these guys turned out. Uh, I will definitely make these ones again. You know what, if you have any questions, post them below. I will be happy to answer them. Uh, yeah, it's not rocket science, but there's some things you need to follow. I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun. I love doing these. They always, uh, it's always great when you have a, a winner at the end. Awesome. A couple things I forgot. I just wanted to make mention of. I did not use any binders in this, like rice flour, or potato starch, or anything like that. Totally free of that. Also. When I'm shocking them and getting them cold like this because I'm actually going to vacuum pack them and freeze them. If you were having friends over, you would just take them off the smoker and serve them hot like that. You wouldn't need to do this. That's why I'm doing this. Thanks for watching everybody and uh, see you next time. Happy eating.